my creatives and welcome to another video so today i'm here to share another happy meal series with you and this time it is happy meal i made for william he lives in belarus and i know the customs in belarus is very strict so i knew i had to send out my happy meal to him as a package um, because the rules just changed and stuff and yeah belarus is just really <laughs> their custom system is really you know strict so um that is also why i decided to make him a journal because i had to stuff the package right because 350 grams i'm gonna stuff it if i'm going to pay that much for shipping <laughs> i'm gonna stuff the package so i made him a journal out of an envelope cover and you see me doing that here so this envelope is A4 size or C4, I don't know really how you call it, but A4 papers go in it. And I found the middle point of the envelope by making, by folding it, but not completely, just making a notch in the middle. And then I uh, scored the spine, but uh, to score the spine, I made sure that on both sides of the middle, there was the same space. So it will depend on how big your envelope is or how big your papers because it doesn't have to be a an envelope that you use you can also use just regular scrapbook paper for this to make the hinge but make sure that on both sides of the middle point there is the same size score line or yeah i think you understand what i mean it's quite difficult to explain uh so yeah i scored that and uh, that gave me room for two signatures I also didn't want to add more t signatures to this because it's just a little journal that I wanted to send. And I prep I started out by prepping my pages or first my cover, of course, because I had to know the size of my paper. Uh, but now I'm just jumping right into putting the signatures together. So uh, the digital kit that I am using is from AC Digitals. And this is an Amy Tangerine uh, digital kit. This is the Shine On collection. I will leave a link to this kit down below in the description box. Also, the other supplies that I use will be listed. And if I can find them linked down below in the description box, so you can check it out for yourself. But I knew I wanted to make a journal with two signatures, but with lots of pattern paper and uh, lots of fun stuff in there because I don't know if William is a journaler. I do know that he is an art journaler because I had a little peek at his Instagram <laughs> before making this and I saw that he really likes the bright colors and the contrast of black so that's also why I picked this collection because I thought it was perfect. So I um, chose my pattern papers and now I'm just uh, going to fold them in half to put them in my signatures. I also took uh, some text paper from an atlas i really like i don't know the way it is organized i think and i took some notebook pages from one of my art journals i had to take those pages out because my art journal was getting too fat <laughs> and i thought that would make a really nice uh, extra thing in the junk journal so now i decided on the front covers of my signatures i want to have that pink leafy pattern and the one with the hearts as front because I think those look really nice together and now I just start to rearrange my uh, signatures so I keep in mind that I have similar kind of papers in both signatures so that not all the black papers are in one or all the bright color papers are in one signature and I'm just going to put them together as I see fit uh, this was a really quick journal to make uh, for me at least, it was quick. Um, because it only has two signatures, uh, I keep my journals I make for others very plain because I don't know what others like. Do they like a lot of pockets? Don't they? Do they want to have a lot of creative freedom? Don't they? So I leave them quite plain for the other to use as they see fit because everyone has a different style. So I don't want to restrict them to a certain type of page, if you know what I mean. So here's the envelope cover. Like I said, I found the middle point of my envelope and then scored on both sides. Uh, I can't remember the size of this um, of this spine. It looks like an inch, maybe two. I'm not quite sure. 
but um, as my papers are not big enough for the cover to be completely covered in paper I thought it would be fun to bring the back black also into the cover so I'm just painting around the sides where I know there will not be any paper I'm using my dilutions black marble paint it's a bit <laughs> weird consistency but you can fix that by adding a little bit of water and let it set but I didn't add enough water I was like yeah I'm just gonna use it now <laughs> And uh, for the inside, I will do the same. I will also start painting the sides black. I also like to use this paint because it is a matte paint. So if you, I want to write anything on top of it, it will uh, work fine. And uh, it, my papers don't really have a glossy finish. So I don't want to have like a really glossy, painty kind of feel. I don't know how to explain it, but I thought this paint was perfect for it. And also it dries really quick and it's really black, which I also really like. So I'm just painting here and I'm also going to paint the flap of the envelope. And I'm also going to paint a little bit inside the envelope so that you don't see the blue uh, of the inside of the envelope very much. Of course, if you pull it open, you will see it, but not when you have the cover closed. And after that, I dried everything off, of course, and I took my papers that I wanted to use on the outside and on the inside. So here you can see me folding it and just giving a little bit of a push at the edge so I know where the middle is and I can cut it. That's also what I did for the envelope. And here I'm doing it again. Just a little push on the edge so you know where the middle is because this paper is in centimeters. My trim and scoreboard is in inches. I'm European, so I work in centimeters and I don't understand inches, but I've learned through crafting and watching other YouTubers using inches, how to use inches, but I cannot convert it in my brain. So uh, that is how I work around this. So now I have these two panels and I am adding them to my cover. And then instantly you have a beautiful cover. So I print my digital kits on 160 GSM printer paper. So it's not very expensive, but it's a bit thicker. And that's also very nice for the cover, but it is still a soft cover. And I found, found that very interesting. Uh, I think I will make one of these for myself as well, because I really like the fact that it's from an envelope and that you have this big pocket at the back to put your stuff in. So I just glue that and uh, checking if it was inside the score line so it would not hang over the spine. And now I'm going to do the same on the inside covers. So I'm just gluing my papers right up to the spine but not over the score line of the spine, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm sorry if this voiceover isn't really helpful. Um, lately I've not been, been so great so if I sound a bit chaotic that's because I am <laughs> so just a little heads up I'm trying <laughs> um, yeah so I'm just sticking my papers down I just use some regular all-purpose glue from I buy it action and uh, I'm using my bone folder to really burnish down the papers so now I take off the strip uh, where there is the self-adhesive stuff but of course it's never strong enough so I'm going to add some glue and add this scrap that I had from the text paper that I added into the journal uh, because I thought it would be fun uh, addition to the flap and it would also tie in the signatures with the cover and I just use the outline of this flap as a template. I don't, I can't be bothered by measuring this out beforehand. I just cut around it. I think that's the easiest way to do something like this. So now your cover is complete. And like I said, it is very simple to do. Uh, and you could even get a bigger spine if you wanted. My, I wanted my pages to be somewhat of A5 size, but if you wanted to have a bigger spine, that's also fine. Your pages will just get smaller. You could also make a traveler's notebook size of this, and then you will have a big fat spine. <laughs> so it's just it just depends on how large you want to have your pages, but it's a really great base to start a journal with. You can also add extra 
strength to the spine by adding some cardboard or something. I didn't do that, uh, but it's also very much possible. I wanted to add this faux stitching detail uh, around the cover and I did that with a white Sakura jelly roll. And now it is time for me to add the signatures to my little book. So uh, I'm just making sure that I have the papers kind of straight in the signature. And when I'm happy with that, I'm going to set them with these binder clips so they will not move. Uh, because the first step that I have to do is to cut off the excess paper. So that's also why I put a binder clip on the piece that will be sewn in. So it will not move while I cut the paper. I did end up moving the ruler, so... <laughs> But <laughs> the paper didn't move. So now everything is nice and secure in these uh, signatures. And uh, then it is ready for me to cut off the excess. I like to do this before everything is sewn in because otherwise it will not be possible to do so. So here I am with my crafting knife and I'm going to... Uh, yeah, just cut off the excess like I said. Um, so press down your ruler very hard because I didn't do that hard enough and it moved. <laughs> So I'm sorry, William, if there is a, not a straight edge, <laughs> but I don't think other, you know, with this, these kinds of things, other people don't really notice, only you know, un and they will know if you tell them, like I do, of course, because I share videos, but usually people will not see it. Say her also had that with the journal I made for her. <laughs> she didn't know it was not the plan that it became smaller than it was. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so here are my signatures and now I'm going to measure out where I want them in my spine. So the spine part is that black middle piece and I try to give both signatures the same space. Um, so I took the spine and I made sure to leave enough room from the side so I think I I don't know, a centimeter or something, or one and a half. I'm not quite sure, but I give the the signatures both like the same width in between, if you know what I mean. I don't know. I think this is a very messy voiceover, <laughs> but I don't care. <laughs> okay, so yeah, here I am drawing my guidelines, and then I uh, decided on a three-hole stitch, so I took my ruler and I found the center point of this and then two or three in centimeters from the bottom and two or three centimeters from the top I think I did two centimeters this time uh, to make my holes this is a very very easy stitch so you don't have to have any experience to do this you can just poke holes and go for it uh, if this video is too fast for you, I also have a real-time tutorial of how I made my personal junk journal uh, out of a cereal box. So I will leave that link for you down below. And I also take you through the sewing step by step and my whole thinking process in real time if you would like to see that. So that is linked down below. So now I'm punching my holes. Be careful not to poke in your fingers. <laughs> uh, I'm very mindful of that, but I've heard horror stories about people poking their hands <laughs> so be careful with that now i like to start from the back uh, so i take my second signature and i start in the back and i start in the middle go up and then in again then i go to the bottom one and i go through all and then i go to the middle again and making sure that my little tassel or my little tail is on both sides of the string that is already there so i can tie it off very nicely and neatly and sturdy uh, and like you see it's not very hard to do so and then that's that I will repeat this process for the first signature as well you need to take about two and a half or three times the height of the book for your thread I like to take three times because it gives me a bigger tassel I can leave inside the book and uh, yeah just uh, I just go for it so this is part one of this series. Uh, I will also post a mixed media envelope pen pull folder 
that is the next video. I will also post an art journal process that I did for William. And I will uh, post the meal art video where I paint the box and wrap everything up. So this mini series also has four videos. If you'd like these kinds of videos, I also made a mini series for Seher, her happy meal. Uh, I also did a junk journal for her. I did an envelope style flipbook. I also made her some art and I did some mail art for her. So uh, you can find that playlist on my channel as well. So now on to the final touch that I like to do for journals that I give away is to include a pocket in the front. So I found this beautiful cactus paper and I really thought it looked nice with the leaves on the other side to bring a bit more of the blue in. And I am just taking a piece of 5 inch by 5 inch. Uh, I measured, of course, my cover to make sure that it would fit. And I score on three sides half an inch to make the pocket. I also take my circle punch to notch out half a circle. Cut off these excess corners in kind of an angle. And then there you have a pocket, so I will stick that in there, so there can, uh, so I can put a card in there for William. Uh, in the case of William, I made a card and I wrote a little message on the back, but on the front of the card there was a possibility for William to add his name and um, the start and finish of date of this journal. But you will also see that later on in the video. So now, of course, this journal also needs a little ribbon. Uh, that's what I like to do. So I found this flower ribbon I thought fit the journal. I took a paper clip and just put it under the binding. So if William doesn't like this ribbon, he can just take it out. Um, like I said, I don't really... That's also why my covers are very plain. I don't want to decide for another person how they should use the journal or how they, you know are stuck to something. I just want to give them a base to work on. And that is how I see junk journals. They are a base and then you work in them and decorate them more as you progress or as your style is. So here's the card I was talking about. So this is a postcard that I also got in Happy Mail, but I really like the colors and I thought the rainbow would fit with Amy Tangerine because she loves rainbows. So it fit this collection. Uh, I also made a tab out of a scrap piece of the paper that I used before. And I'm going to add that on top of this card as a pull tab. Um, I'm also going to do some faux stitching around that because you know I love my borders. <laughs> and I'm just going to decorate the card just uh, a tiny bit. So yeah, uh, like I said about junk journals, I like them to see them as a base. I know uh, there are a lot of people that really enjoy journals that are completely decorated and stuff for them, but that's not how I like them. And like I said, I don't want to decide that for another person. Uh, I don't know if William is someone who collects a lot of ephemera or not. I don't know if he's a journaler or not. I know that he makes uh, art and these pages can be perfect for art journaling, but you can also just write on them or add you know, all kinds of stuff to them. There's a lot of freedom. The only thing I did was designing on the color scheme somewhat, but you can always cover everything up if you don't like a certain paper. <laughs> that, at least that's what I do if I don't like a thing in my journal or it doesn't fit my theme when I'm there. I just cover it up. Like, it's my journal, I can do what I want. <laughs> So here is a little ephemera piece from the Shine On collection and uh, I eventually don't use this card because there was another card that I like to contrast better. But this is the card where, or not this, but the other one. I'm going to add the name dot dot uh, start and finish so William can fill that in for himself. Uh, I take this seriously card because I don't know, I really love the color screen and the contrast of this card with the background. So that is why I chose it uh, to stick on the front of this card and add a little bit of an embellishment. So all of these embellishments are also hand cut by me uh, because of the AC Digital's kit. I like to do that on the couch when I 
don't feel very creative but I want to do something I just put on some YouTube and I just got away uh, I'm recently getting a Halloween kit and I know it's May but I don't care <laughs> because I have a pen pal who loves any Halloween any time of year so well that is the journal now I'm going to stick my own sticker in here and of course Link joins this project and approves it with his little kitty paws so here is a final flip through of the journal as it is right now and as I sent it to William. I really hope you enjoyed this video and it was a little bit of helpful and that my voiceover wasn't as chaotic as I think it is. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. Uh, stay posted for the other videos that are in this series. I tried to make a whole of everything so uh, because that's what I like to do. <laughs> Hello Link. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, I would love it if you would give me a thumbs up. I would also love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and I hope to see you all next time. Bye!